Today, I want to give you guys my review on Trail Makers. Now, this comes to us via Xbox Game Pass for PC. However, you can also buy this on Steam. It's available on the Xbox One console. It's also available on the PlayStation 4 console. And this is not, by the way, a new game. This game has been out for some time. It's already got some DLCs with it. Um, mostly in the types of different skins that you can get and different variants in the blocks. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. It's also gotten some pretty nice upgrades. It's gone to a final 1.0 release and they just, uh, about last month, early July, they released a 1.1 release, which includes even more functionality. So I've, like I said, I got into it because of Xbox Game Pass for PC and I highly recommend it. If you take nothing away from this video, I'm telling you guys, it's a fun game. Um, what you're looking at here is some early gameplay from me, some wonky physics, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, it's a fun game and I'm playing on the single player variant. I should mention there is a whole multiplayer component to it where you can build and race and do other sorts of things. I prefer the single player mode because it's a lot more relaxing, kind of go at my own pace. And I feel like it has a much more natural sense of progression as you kind of work through the various challenges. So the plot of the game is very simple. You are an astronaut whose ship gets uh, hit by a meteor and you crash on this remote planet and you have to rebuild your ship in order to leave the planet. And how you rebuild your ship is by collecting all of these various parts that are scattered around the world. Now they'll give you enough parts to begin a very basic vehicle. That's what you see me driving around here. It is a little dark right now. There is a full day and night cycle on this game. I do have some daytime gameplay as the video progresses. And then there's a jump cut later on where I have some more uh, gameplay there as well. But the idea is you're trying to collect various parts from your ship. And what you have to do is take all of these parts and rebuild and get off the planet. And they're scattered all around. Some of them, the early ones, are in plain sight. Very, very easy to find. It's as simple as you driving this pre-made car that they basically give you when you start over to the part and then knocking it into one of various um, like receptacles so that you basically beam the part back into your building database, if you want to think of it that way. And as you unlock these parts via collecting them, it will open up new building opportunities for you. Um, one of the early parts you get, at least that I got, was a bigger engine. So I put a bigger engine on my car that allowed me to move larger parts. It allowed me to drive up uh, taller inclines. It allowed me to have a faster top speed. Um, another part that I got early on was an air dam that allowed me to have less aerodynamic drag, also improve, uh, improve my top speed, but then also s s served as like a ramp, um, basically it's for me to like run under something and like lift it up really high. And you'll notice that all of these parts are scattered in different places and they require different modifications to your vehicle in order to unlock. Some of them will give you pretty good hints, like the one that I just gathered now, where it's like, hey, look, it's sitting on a rock, so you need to make some kind of tall, almost like a forklift looking structure to be able to crash into it and to knock it off the cliff. Um, others are kind of for you to determine. There are multiple ways to solve these challenges. I would say that there is not a silver bullet answer to each and every challenge that you stumble across. The reality is, the challenges are kind of up to you. And as I mentioned, they're really at your own pace. Um, I do believe there is some gating in this game intentionally because they want you to kind of understand the basics before you start getting into more advanced vehicles. Uh, I should note that you start with a car, you eventually will upgrade to flying vehicles and to aquatic vehicles, both above and below water, to navigate and to collect these various items. Some of the items have more meaning to you than others early on. Like I unlocked a piston earlier. I personally don't have much use for it right now. 
as where an item like a headlamp would be phenomenal because I'm driving around in the dark. It's very, very difficult to see. Ironically enough, by the time I actually get the headlamp and put it on my car, it turns into daytime, so I don't need it anyways, but I still have it for the next cycle. And um, basically what you do is you're driving around freely. Um, there's no punishment for crashing. You press a button, you simply repair your vehicle. There's no punishment for exploring and trying new things. You can build cars into what they call a blueprint, so you can have it saved. So if you like something, you can press a button and instantly switch to it. If you, uh, you can, you're allowed to have multiple blueprints, you can swap cars basically seamlessly. Um, kind of reminds me of like the crew too, if you ever played that where like you could drive and then press a button and suddenly you're a car and suddenly you're a boat and suddenly you're an airplane. Um, the bread and butter of the game really is in that exp here, my, I'm out of my headlight to the side, like a goober. I'm like, why is it so dark? I was like, oh, <laughs> cause they're pointing the wrong way. Uh, and that kind of gets me into the crafting thing, which basically pauses the game and puts you in a three-dimensional space where you have a litany of parts down at the bottom left. As you unlock more parts, more things will become available. They're pre-categorized into things like structures and into wheels and into accessories, frames. There's buoyancy, there's different types of motors, there's different types of wings and gears, etc. And basically you go into this 3D space and you can craft, there you go, now my headlight's working. Oh, it just broke off <laughs> and it turned off because it's now daytime. So all that for what? <laughs> for the next cycle, right? Um, basically, you, you go around and you build and as you unlock new things, it allows you to progress and to find more and more items. Some of them are easy to find. Some of them are a little bit more detailed. Like here's a perfect example. I saw some stuff across the water. So I said, well, what I really need to do is I need to figure out how to build a boat so that I could drive over there and go collect that treasure and bring it either back to this side of the island or at least to navigate over so I'm over on that side of the island exploring. And this gets you into the crafting system. As you can see, you can click and drag. Um, it does support controller. I don't really recommend it. I think you're gonna wanna use a keyboard for this one particularly. There's some of these some of these things are a little hard to navigate, in my opinion. Um, I did struggle a little bit with the building, but basically anything that has those yellow looking like pips on it, they snap. And when they snap, um, and you saw there's exclamations telling me I didn't even connect them right. And I'm like, wait, why didn't that work? Um, they actually have to snap to each other. When they snap, they'll turn green, which is an indication that, hey, you have made a solid connection. You are allowed to, um, those two pieces snap, otherwise they're not really connected. That's why they fell off instantly. And it's gonna take me a few minutes to stumble across this in this playthrough to, under, to explain it to you, but I wanted to give you guys some raw gameplay. I will do a jump cut at the end where you can see the finished product as I kind of like understand it a little bit more. But essentially you're basically slowly building up your car and saving off different pieces to allow you to do more and more challenges. And that's really where the progression is. Um, if you don't really understand at this point how to build a water vehicle, um, then there's really no point in trying to progress here. I actually had to go out and build or and rather find underwater parts. So there were parts in the island that basically were like, hey, look, um, you can't progress until you get this part. So I went and found it. If I had tried to do this earlier, I wouldn't have been able to. That's why I said there's some gating involved, in my opinion, more like, and it's okay to do that too. I think that's important to have some kind of gating. Now, you just saw there, uh, one of my major frustrations with the game is despite the fact that it isn't a 1.0 release, I sometimes find the building very touchy and glitchy. Uh, sometimes the camera will wildly swing in a random direction and you're basically out of your building zone. You could see the, the grid of how large of a cart you can build is. You could get pretty extensive on your vehicles and I have seen some screenshots of some very, very crazy vehicles, particularly on the, the Steam store page that uh, people have built these giant replicas of helicopters and tanks and sharks. I'm just trying to build a very, very basic little submarine or at least some sort of boat to get across the water. Um, but uh, it, the sky's the limit on the game like this. And I, and I do appreciate that you are rewarded for exploring by finding new pieces that allows you to continue building. I think a lot of these games throw too many things at you too quickly. I think that's always been a down site of these kind of exploration games where 
you are, are these building games rather that do have exploration components where they basically open up the entire toolbox. Um, Besieged is a very good example of that. And it is kind of overwhelming for new players who aren't used to this type of game because there's just hundreds of parts to select from. And I feel like the way that this game has come together, it's a lot nicer. It's a lot more subtle. It slowly introduces you to just the basics of the foundations of a car before it starts getting into really crazy uh, contraptions. And I like that. So I think if you are going to pick this game up, definitely invest some time in the single player story, kind of go through, explore, learn kind of the ropes of kind of how building works and how that is kind of put together. Uh, and there you can see I have what I believe to be a nice completed submarine. Uh, it looks good to me. Obviously, I need to get it in the water now. This is that blueprint function I was mentioning. I'm going to save that car off as a blueprint there. You could see it's now been added to my blueprint at the bottom and I could switch back into my car, which is great. I can just drive my car and um, once I figure out the controls, just got to drag it in. It'll take me a second to figure that out. Double clicking, I'm like dragging my head, scratching my head, not understanding. There we go. And once I finally figure out that you could take your blueprint and you just drag it into the game. There you go. Now I got my car, I drive my car in the water and i'm gonna try out my new little submarine and you're gonna see that it fails horribly because i have not done very well with my buoyancy and the whole thing absolutely just completely collapses so after about 30 minutes or so you're gonna see a little jump cut here and i am going to actually figure out how to build it and there you go now i'm wrapping up a much more stable machine where the buoyancy is on the top. I have the engine on the bottom and I'm gonna be able to drive this in the water and go across and continue my exploration. So if you put the time into this game and you play with the sandbox and explore and have fun, you're gonna be rewarded. You're gonna be able to explore new areas, find new pieces of gear to continue to expand your vehicle. So with that, I'm gonna close out this video. Um, I just wanna say this is a phenomenal game. I if you like building games, definitely check this one out. As I mentioned, it's on Game Pass for PC, but it is available on console and for individual purchase on Steam. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned a thing or two. And if you check it out, leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. There's some great subreddits out there for great building ideas. The Steam Workshop has other great ideas as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.